Hello everyone, welcome back to Medinair. This is part 2 of the anatomical landmarks of the tooth. In the part 1, we have seen some anatomical landmarks of the crown of the tooth in detail like cusp, cingulum, tubercle, mammalons, lobes, ridges and fossa. The link of that video is in the description box below. Now let's begin with the part 2. Pits. Pits are small pinpoint depressions located at the junction of the developmental grooves or at the terminals of those grooves. It is usually seen in the fossa of the posterior teeth. The pits are divided into various types according to their location such as central pit, buccal pit, lingual pit, mesial and distal pit. The central, mesial and distal pit are present on the occlusal surface of the teeth. The buccal pit and the lingual pit is seen on the buccal and lingual surfaces respectively. The central pit is found in the central fossa on the occlusal surface of molars, whereas the mesial and distal pit is found in the mesial and distal triangular fossa on the occlusal surface of premolars and molars. The buccal pit is found on the buccal surface where the buccal developmental groove terminates. The lingual pit is found on the lingual surface where the lingual developmental groove terminates. Fissures Fissure is a sharp crevice between the cusp and ridge formed at the bottom of the developmental grooves. It is defined as deep clefts between the adjoining cusps. They are the areas of retention of caries producing agents. The fissures can be of various types such as V-type, U-type, I-type, I-K-type and inverted Y-type. Since these areas can hold a lot of caries producing agent, we can prevent them by sealing the pit and fissures using pit and fissure sealants. Sulcus Sulcus is a long linear depression or valley in the occlusal surface of the posterior teeth. Inclination of the sulcus meet at an angle to form the developmental groove. Developmental groove It is a sharply defined narrow and linear depression formed during the tooth development. The central developmental groove is seen on the occlusal surface whereas the buccal and lingual developmental groove is seen on the buccal and lingual surfaces respectively. This picture shows Central developmental groove and supplemental groove. Supplemental groove is similar to the developmental groove but it does not mark the junction of the lobes or the major portions of the tooth. Contact areas. Contact areas are the crests of curvature on the proximal surface of two adjacent teeth in the same dental arch that comes in contact with each other. The term contact point is interchangeable with the term contact area but contact point refers to small size contact which is seen usually in newly erupted teeth whereas contact area refers to broad contact area which is produced due to constant contact or rubbing of the proximal surfaces as age advances. There are two types of contact areas which are mesial and distal. The deciduous second molar and permanent third molar only have one contact area that is mesial contact area because distally they don't have any tooth. The position of those may vary as an incisal third, middle or the junction of middle and incisal third. Contact area aid in stabilizing the tooth by preventing migration of them. They also prevent food impaction between the tooth. They preserve the interdental papilla. Interproximal spaces. These are spaces that are triangular or V-shaped. They are present cervical to the contact area. It is a triangular space where the apex of the triangle is formed by the contact area of two teeth, base is formed by the alveolar bone 
the sides are formed by the proximal surface of the adjacent teeth. We find interdental papilla from the gingiva in this space. In case of gingival recession, the interproximal space transforms into a cervical embrasure as the interdental bone and the interdental papilla do not fill up that space. Embrasures Embrasures are V-shaped spillway spaces or triangular spaces. These are formed by the curvatures of the adjacent teeth contact area. There are four embrasures for every contact area. They are facial, lingual or palatal, occlusal and gingival. The main difference between the interproximal spaces and embrasures is that the interproximal spaces are filled with the interdental gingiva whereas embrasures are empty spaces adjacent to the teeth. Embrasures form spillways between the teeth to direct food away from the gingiva. They also provide a mechanism for teeth to be self-cleansing and they protect the gingiva from undue frictional trauma by providing the proper degree of stimulation to the tissues. We have completed the anatomical landmarks of the crown. Now let's move on to the landmarks of the root. We have apex, apical foramen or accessory foramen, root trunk and furcation as the landmarks. Root apex. It is the terminal end of the root portion of the teeth. Apical foramen. Apical foramen is the opening of the pulp canal at the apical end of the root through which your blood vessels and nerve will pass into the pulp canal. The accessory foramen is a channel leading from the root pulp laterally through the dentine to the periodontal tissue. It may be found anywhere in the tooth root, but it is more common in the apical third of the root. Root trunk is seen in the multi-rooted teeth, where the undivided cervical portion of the root is called the root trunk. Furcation In multi-rooted teeth, we can find the division of the root that is termed as furcation. If the root is divided into two parts, it is called bifurcation and if it is divided into three parts, it is called trifurcation. That brings us to the end of the video. I hope you guys liked it. Thank you for watching.